Okay, today we're going to be working on a Ford C6 valve body. This is out of a 79 unit. Uh, we're going to tear it down, uh, overhaul it, and install a basic shift kit. So uh, this first section will kind of show the tear down, and uh, then we'll clean it up, get everything prepped, and then we'll film the reassembly. So real quick with these, um, I'm not sure which valve body you're working on or when it was made. Uh, you can find that out by looking at the casting number. Uh, so we have an alphanumeric code. It's going to be right here on uh, this side of the valve body. And basically it's going to have the first two digits, which you can ignore, and then it's going to have uh, an alpha nu uh, character and a numeric character as your second two digits. And that's what you want to pay attention to. So the letter corresponds to the decade in which this valve body was made. And there's um, C, D, E, F. That corresponds to um, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. So C for the 60s, D for the 70s, um, E for the 80s, and F for the 90s. And then the numeric uh, character corresponds to the actual year of production. So how you would interpret uh, this, uh, this particular casting, D9, as a 1979 valve body. So D for 70s, and then 9 for the actual year of production. Uh, on the channel casting side, you have the code here. Um, again, you could ignore the RF, and then this is D for the 70s, and then this particular casting was manufactured in 1977. Uh, this becomes important because the uh, early, very early valve bodies are not, strictly speaking, interchangeable with the late, uh, especially in 66 and 67. Uh, they are widely different. They're known as, uh, the 66 is known as a green dot valve body. Uh, completely different configuration and, and uh, you know, valving architecture. So um, you want to be mindful of that in the event you're not sure um, which year model case or, you know, what year uh, valve body that you have. Uh, you can find in, in almost every Ford transmission, there's going to be that same alpha numeric code. Uh, you, you know, you'll be able to decode and figure out what year you're working on. So anyway, uh, we'll start the teardown. And what you want to do, assuming you didn't take the filter off already, you want to re uh, remove all the filter bolts. They're all 5 sixteenths of an inch. And um, on this side here, you'll notice at this bolt hole location, it's kind of on a raised boss. All right, that's gonna, this bolt's going to be a little bit longer. Okay, so right here. It's going to be a little bit longer, so just be mindful of that. All right, so there's that, that longer bolt. So there's normally a gasket that goes right here. In this case, did not have one for whatever reason. Um, somebody must have changed this and just simply forgot to put the gasket on. All right, so to separate the valve body from the spacer plate and the channel casting, um, when they do separate, you want this facing up, okay? So you, wanna, you want that facing up because you're going to have your converter relief um, valve and spring, your throttle pressure valve and spring for pressure relief, as well as your 2-3 check ball and your reverse check ball all on the underside of this valve body. So if you're not sure where they go, I mean, there's plenty of diagrams and such out there, but you know, if you don't want them, you know, falling all over the place or getting lost, then you want to have this uh, casting facing up when you separate them. So go ahead and start with these first two bolts. Okay. I mean, it's obvious, but... Uh, the long one goes here, and then the shorter one goes here. And 
then you're going to flip the valve body over and you're just going to start removing everything else. All right, now you don't want to remove the channel casting to and spacer plate hold down plates just yet. We'll get to those shortly. All right, and then on your ID tag, you'll notice that this bolt's a little longer. The rest of the bolts are all the same, same length. All right, so now you can flip your channel casting over and you have your spacer plate. A lot of gunk in this valve body. This transmission was pretty nasty, so um, it's to be expected. Okay, so here is your throttle pressure relief uh, spring and check ball. So quarter inch. It's going to be a reverse check ball. You have your two three check ball, and then here's your converter relief valve and uh, little plug. So that's a uh, converter pressure relief. You just want to make sure that you keep the springs, um, you know, together with the correct, uh, you know, relief valves or balls. So I just spaced them widely apart from each other on the bench so that uh, there's no chance of getting them mixed up. You can use magnets for this too. I mean, it's not a big deal if they're magnetized. All right, uh, the next thing we're gonna do is remove the spacer plate from the channel casting. Now you see there's a ton of crud, burnt clutch material and other whatnot. Nothing in the channel casting, so it's just more or less worm tracks. All right, pause the video, I'm gonna set everything up and then we'll start going through the bow body. All right, so I'll run through the valves real quick and then we'll go ahead and disassemble everything. So over here you have your intermediate servo modulator valve and spring, your uh, intermediate servo accumulator valve, and you should have two springs in here if you have a late model valve body, early models only took one spring. Your 2-3 um, two, two, back out valve, your 2-3 shift valve and throttle modulator valve, your 1-2 shift valve and drive 2 valve. In the case of the 2-3 shift valve, if you're working on a diesel application, you have a second spring in here that slides onto the valve itself. Uh, gas applications don't have that. So 1-2 um, shift valve and drive 2 valve 
um, your line pressure coast valve, and then your uh, cutback control valve. So that's the main line. Over here you have your 2-1 scheduling valve and your uh, throttle pressure boost valve and spring, your downshift valve, your manual valve, and then lastly you have your main pressure regulator valve and boost valve assembly and spring. Um, all these valves come out except for the manual valve, it's captured. That being said, if any of these valves um, you know, show a lot of resistance when trying to take them out, you know, where you have to almost pry them out, like with a crowbar, um, you don't actually want to take out that valve. And where I usually run into this problem is the uh, throttle modulator valve in here. Uh, I, you know, when I first started doing C6s, I've had a couple of these where I had to pry out, and when I went to, you know, reinstall it, it wouldn't go in. And it usually means that the casting or this part of the casting is ever so slightly out of round. Um, it's not a huge deal in terms of, um, you know, being out around and impairing function of the valve body, but you don't want to be in a situation where you can't get the valve back in. I mean, you can, you know, maybe polish the hell out of the bore, especially that opening where this part of the bore, um, you know, uh, where that valve's located. But uh, most often you'll have to get in there with like a drill and a bit of the exactly the right size to open up that, you know, entryway so that you can get that valve back in. And that's not recommended because it's very easy to ruin the casting that way. So if this valve or frankly any of these valves don't want to come out, then just leave them in and then stick it in the, you know, hot tank or parts washer or whatever. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, and then just wash it. As long as it's moving freely inside of its location, uh, you know, in that part of the bore, you'll be fine. So first thing we'll do is remove this um, cover plate. So I like to start outside, work my way in. So five sixteenths. Okay. Alright, I'm going to zoom out and then we'll start taking out the valves. And what you could do too, I mean, I didn't do this, but what you could do is uh, just check to see that all these valves are moving freely before you take this main plate off. And if they are, um, like some builders will actually go in and, you know, stick the whole assembled valve body in a, uh, you know, in a parts washer that uses petroleum-based solvent. And as long as the valves are moving and they're not, you know, um, installing any crazy shift kits or doing a lot of modifications, they'll just run it as is. And in most cases, it's fine. Uh, this particular unit, though, um, came in. It, 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 it looks like it was ran low on fluid and had a tremendous amount of sludge and, and particulate matter all throughout the transmission. So if you have something, you know, in that you know, that filthy or that dirty, it's a good idea to, uh, to just overhaul the valve body completely. I'm going to go grab a magnet. Here's your back out valve. Accumulator valve, the two springs, and then the modulator valve for the intermediate servo. Here's your two three shift valve. And like I said, if there was a if this was a diesel application, there'd be a another spring right here. I'll 
come back to that one. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can get this throttle modulator valve to actually go back in. Yeah, because these, these can be tricky. I could zoom in. So here's the throttle modulator valve. In the past, um, these have been very difficult to get back in. So if yours is such that it doesn't fall out of the bore freely, then you know you just probably want to leave it in there. Okay. All right, next we'll take off the end plate, get it the 2-1 uh, two scheduling valve and the throttle boost pressure regulator, or throttle boost valve, I should say. All right, this is under spring tension, so... You want to make sure that you don't uh, allow the valves to go flying across the room. This over here. All right, I'm not 100% sure that plate's oriented correctly, but on disassembly, it doesn't matter. When we go to reassemble it, you'll see exactly how it goes. Okay, next we'll do the boost valve assembly. And then I'll do the um, kick down valve. So the boost valve has a retainer. It's right here. And we're just gonna pry up on that. And you want to make sure that you're, you know, you got your hand on the, um, the boost sleeve. Okay. Sometimes they pop out, sometimes they don't. To wedge it out, Just go in with a screwdriver and pick, you know, some combination of picks and screwdrivers and wedge it out. Alright, there we go.
So you got your boost valve spring and your pressure regulator valve spring. And then lastly, you have the pressure regulator valve itself along with the spring seat. So that's how the spring seat goes. And it lines up just like this. All right, the next, um, or I should say the last valve we're gonna remove is the kick down valve. So, just take your magnet, push the valve in so that the magnet, or so that the retainer protrudes a little bit, and then out it comes. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you have, again, you know, your hand on the spring. want to feel make sure it's not getting seized or stuck okay so put it back in and you want to see it fall under its own weight fully into the bore and that's how you know it's it's okay All right, so as I mentioned, this is captured, does not come out. This valve body is fully assembled, or excuse me, this valve body is fully disassembled. And we're ready to clean everything up. We're gonna install a very basic shift kit, a Transgo, uh, I think it's SK6 or something like that. And um, you know, we'll, we'll video that process so that you can see how that all goes back together. But